And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. And the crowd goes wild. It's the best intro in radio, ladies and gentlemen. The best producer, Courtney, bringing the heat. I am Todd Tremonti. This is DFW Real Estate Weekly. We've got the full crew in studio. Hey. We got 29 hey. good fingers ready to rock this radio show. Ian is still playing hurt, and we appreciate the all-out effort. We're Give me here my all for you, Todd. Taking your questions today, 214-310-0008 or always anywhere online. Just Google Todd Tremonti toddtremontiteam.com. You'll find us. We'll take your questions, your concerns. We'll help you figure out your remodel, your purchase, your sale. I'm a real estate broker and we run a team with offices in Richardson and Fort Worth all day, every day. And that's how we know what the heck it is that we're talking about. So whether we're writing books, doing radio, YouTube podcast, uh, speaking at events, training agents, coaching, consulting, or any of that, why would you care? Courtney wants to know. That is what I want to know. Yeah. I want to know why why people should listen to us. I think that like, Al- hello, hi Ian. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next Ian's week. Ian's here. Um, no, no, Courtney's been driving. You know, kind of jabbing me in the ribs a little bit metaphorically, just saying, why do people care what we have to say? And I think it's a very fair question. So I'm not going to run down the resume, but we're going to talk about that throughout the show today. Not only why what we have to say is is helpful to you why it's informative, why it is trustworthy, why we want to be an advocate for you. Uh, Obviously, it goes without saying. We're a real estate brokerage. At some point, if you are the right fit for us and we're the right fit for you, we'd love to earn your business. But most people don't need to buy or sell a house right now. And some of the ones that do aren't even a great fit for us or we're not a great fit for them. And we still want to be a value to literally everyone out there, homeowners, buyers, sellers, renters, investors in the DFW area or wanting to be in the DFW area. So that's the mission. That's the goal of the show. And part of that is honestly a sense of annoyance and frustration that I am regularly annoyed and frustrated with uh, the media. Now, that doesn't mean I'm angry at every newscaster that they have some crazy political political agenda. That's, you know, a lot of people feel that way. What I'm talking about is that people who write articles and produce news segments or media segments are not representing home buyers and sellers. Well, it just feels like there's such an agenda. Like, how can I trust you? Well, I would go so far as to say that's true, but also the opposite is true. Like they don't have any agenda. They're just trying to get eyeballs and ears. And again, I'm not necessarily angry at any one of them. They're just in a different business. They're in the business of attention and interest. We are in the business of protecting homeowners, home buyers, home sellers, helping them make wise choices, right? So we'll get into it later in the show of why and how and what that means. But the point is that's what we're doing here every Saturday. If you check out the podcast, DFW Real Estate Weekly, wherever you listen to podcasts, That's what we're doing with the radio show, our bonus episodes, hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos, multiple best-selling books, is putting information out there that is the accurate, true, on-the-ground information that would help. Why do we do that? A, because we believe that God has given us unique gifts and abilities and we want to share them with the world. B, we run a business that is built on adding value and serving home buyers, home sellers, investors, homeowners, renters, and, and, and third, I would add, I love homes. I'm not obsessive about, you know, construction, formatting and materials, but I believe that the house, your home, your apartment, your tent, wherever you live, there's some magic there. There's some purpose there. There's meaning there. And you ought to approach that in a way that helps you live the life you want to live. So we'll dig into that a whole bunch more. We got full price Courtney, producer Courtney in studio with us. We also have the Yanni Donnie. The English wonder himself, lover of F1 racing, European football, also referred to as soccer. Once again, playing hurt on the show with a microphone fully unmuted. And this first segment is brought to you by Patrick Leros and his team at Cardinal Financial. You can reach out to Patrick if you're looking to get a mortgage, if you're looking to refinance, whatever it is, reach out to him, patrickgleros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S. 
patrickglios.com. You can start an application right there on his website. You can call him, reach out 972-728-3420, NLS number 308-804. And as I always tell you, you can find all of the recommended pros and vendors right on our website. Go to toddtramonyteam.com, click the radio tab, and you will find them all right there. Well, let's, let's kind of get into it, right? So let's talk about, I, I think, Courtney makes a good point. Like, who are we supposed to be listening to? Like, what are the media that we can listen to? Because the media historically, I mean, just as a blanket statement, they're trying to get as many clicks as they can, right? <laughs> Media's changed a whole lot over the years yep. from the written, printed version of media to but what we have now. This is going to surprise you, but in defense of the media, right? You know, 50 years ago, you would have had radio and some television and we, even if we said that was pure news, right? There was no agenda. It was just, you know, people reporting the news. Even they did not have what we call a fiduciary responsibility, meaning a responsibility to advocate, to act on behalf of a client or a consumer. So a real estate professional has that. I'm a real estate broker. Ian's licensed, has a real estate role within our business. Uh, and Courtney supports us from a media perspective. But the point I'm making is I don't necessarily represent every one of our viewers, listeners, readers, friends, and neighbors. We represent a lot of them. But our goal is different than a pure media role, which is, to your point, to gain interest, to be informative. Our desire is that we are helping you make better real estate decisions. You can analyze your property value better because of the advice, tools, and resources that we give you. Now, we don't represent everybody. So, you know, there's a line there between what we can do for someone that we have a contract and, you know, we have a, we're required to, to be their personal, we're put, to put their needs ahead of our own, right? That's what that fiduciary deal means. But the answer is we've given our life to the industry of real estate. And we believe that in many ways it is our business and our ministry that real estate allows us to help people make decisions that protect their family, that set their family up to develop, that impact education, healthcare, jobs, church, parks and recreation. Like your home is a driver of so many of those things. And we get invited into those conversations. We don't impose our way into them, but many, 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 many clients invite us into how the house will impact the commute to work, the drive to church, where the kids go to school, how they play and rest and protect and all those things. So that's great for the people that listen to our show or people that we get to talk to. But let's just say a listener of the show has a friend that doesn't listen to the show and they're like, oh, you should, you should listen to this show on a Saturday. And they're like, I don't want to listen to a radio show on a Saturday. Like where are places that people can send others to get accurate information on what is going on in real estate shameless plug you got to go check out the podcast obviously but what are the other sources of accurate information i think yeah, because, is the root of the question because people are going to people get so much of their news now from places like facebook right yeah. because they follow the local news station so they're seeing yeah, the we, ads and they, they're seeing the headlines and it's just negative 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 we live in a world of algorithms so you see what you saw is what really happens. Once you start looking at stuff, you see more of that stuff. So you can go down the rabbit hole of one extreme or the other, or just one narrow lane. One thing I would recommend people do related to real estate is <clears throat> look at the data and not the interpretation of the data. That's harder to do. But one of the things we do here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team is we put out a monthly market report where we just give you the raw data. Now, it's in a pretty chart and graph that helps you read the data, but we're not giving you our interpretation of the data in that report. Now, for our clients, we do, of course. But what we're saying is, here's how many homes sold, here's how many sold in this price point, here's how fast they sold, and here's how many are coming onto the market, at what pace, and the percentage of this and the percentage of that. Like, it's it's real and by the way in our report we also put out some definitions of like what the terminology means and you know not how you should use it necessarily but you can trust that the data is accurate i get interviewed a lot on other radio shows or tv or whatever and i often say well that statistic is the the number is right but the way they're interpreting it is misleading and Oftentimes people are like, that's, that's so frustrating. So my, the, the answer to your question, the best one I can give you, cause I don't have like, you know, you know, CNN's great for real estate. I'm not picking on CNN. There's not one giant media outlet that I'm like, that's the place you go for real estate info. What I'm saying is you read the data yourself or the statistic yourself 
and be less reliant on someone else's interpretation of it until it's time to buy, sell, invest, lease, remodel. And then you want a local expert that you can trust, not just the person with the most signs, not just the person that you went to college with, but somebody that you can really trust to utilize that data for your benefit in an unselfish way. Right. Hopefully, hopefully that answers the question. I think that's <clears throat> what's great about what we do because I feel like there's a an interview process of them being you being a good fit and what are the right steps for your situation and not just like get whatever house you want and like you're looking at their finances you're looking at their life you're like really entering well, into it, their story it shocks a lot of people that when they want like a buyer for example is looking for an agent to help them buy <laughs> some of them are shocked that we're also interviewing them right it's like what do you mean you might, I might not be a fit for you. Like you're a realtor. You want every deal you could possibly get. And we're, we're kind of over here going, no, that's what's wrong with our industry mm -hmm. is that realtors are going, yeah, I'll do commercial, residential, industrial, big ones, small ones in town, out of town. And therefore you're not very good at your job because you can't be an expert at those things. So we are, we focus on a handful of key areas as a team. We can have a handful of key areas because we have a dozen or so people. Um, but it's, it's not at all uncommon for us to interview a potential client and say, hey, we feel great about you, but we're not the best fit for the service you need. It's also not uncommon for us to say, hey, uh, we like you guys, but you're not the right property type or situation for us to add the most value. We'll help you find someone who could do a better job. You know, you want to buy a industrial building? That's not our core competency, but call us anyway. We'll hear your story and then we'll connect you with the right person for that. So that's- so, did that with somebody that was looking to rent. Happens all the time, yeah. yeah. Like, how do you know that you can trust somebody? Like, what am I yeah, looking that, that's for? the thing is you, like, that's hard to do from an ad you got in the mail, right? Or for, even from an, an, an ad you heard one time on the radio or television or whatever. So there, there's got to be that conversational assessment. Now, there's other things like online reviews. Uh, when someone has five reviews, they're kind of hard to trust because most of us have five friends. But when someone's got two, three, four hundred or more, we currently have 700 and something reviews online. Um, you can start to get a really good feel for common themes. Are these people technology driven? Are they relationally driven? Do they cover mostly this part of town or can they do my part of town? So that stuff's helpful, but I don't think anything is as helpful as what we call an initial consultation, sitting down and having a grown up conversation, ask the questions you want to ask, even if they feel a little bit stupid to you, you know, this, this question may be dumb, but ask it anyway. Right. But also be open. One of the things I ask when I'm the consumer, and, and it, good salesmen love this question, bad salesmen get annoyed by it. I'll say, what am I not asking you that I should be asking you? And I'm not saying that's brilliant. I'm just going, hey, I know I'm not the expert. I think you might be. Help convince me. What should I be asking you? How should I be looking out for my family that I'm not? And if they have a great answer to that, sometimes what we call a damaging admission, meaning it doesn't always promote them. They might say, well, you really ought to be asking about this warranty. And we actually don't offer that. It's like, wow, that was a truthful, helpful, honest answer. Thank you. Can I get it elsewhere and still work with you? All of a sudden I'm compelled to work with that person. So you, you, you want to find someone that you do feel compelled to work with because you feel like they will advocate for you. Not just they can open the door, they can fill out the contract, they can find the house, but they'll go to battle for you. That's the answer to your first question. That's that fiduciary I will protect you even if it costs me at times. And that just doesn't exist in the media world. And I'll say it one more time. I'm not saying that everyone in media is a bad person. They just have a very different job than we do. Our job is to protect home buyers, home sellers, investors. Their job is to make sure people watch and listen it's and good, read. It's a good answer. I think the other option <clears throat> is to, because uh, people are all honest and don't lie, right? So you just say, hey, can I trust you? It's yeah, a, just ask. It's just another option. Yeah. It's a shorter option. But just throw it on a throne of lies. This next segment is brought to you by DP Lambert and Goosehead Insurance. Uh, we've told you for years and years and years uh, how good DP is, just the way that he communicates, his team communicates, and most importantly, how he continues to save us hundreds, if not thousands of dollars 
uh, every time we uh, we work with him when he's reshopping our home insurance, our auto insurance, figuring out what's the best way to be able to get you the most coverage at the cheapest price possible. Just continues to do a great job. And uh, he's been doing this for a long time now. dp.lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at goosehead.com is how you can reach out to him. You can also give him a call, 214-838-5684. <laughs> you can find all that information on the Todd Tremonti team website. Just click the radio tab and you'll find it all there. Touchmoneyteam.com. I think like trust matters even more when specialization is at play. And I think like, especially with your knowledge about homes on land and what we can offer clients, like that feels immensely important. It, it is. And I agree, obviously we've built a business around what we feel are areas of specialization homes on land being one of the dominant ones. Uh, you know, nicer neighborhood homes all throughout DFW is another one sounds really vague, but there is, there's a line that you draw there and you go, Hey, we just don't know that area as well. We haven't done as much work there. So let me connect you with someone else. Um, but I think specialization or niching or niching, uh, has got, um, is poorly defined in our world, right? So we joke in our office about the sign writer, like the sign that's in the front yard, the little writer up top or bottom that says neighborhood specialist. What does that actually mean? It means you live here. Does that mean does, specializing in what? You know what the HOA is doing? You know what they're putting in at the park? Or do you know how to protect a buyer in a weird scenario where the seller's got a relocation company and they're asking for a very strange contract term? Like there's a whole difference in what specialization means. Well, that, and, and I want you to get into this piece of it too, because we can say we specialize in multiple areas because we're a team and we've got people yeah. that can specialize in multiple areas. How does that change when it's like an individual? Well, it sounds contradictory and I'm glad you brought that up and I kind of hinted at that earlier, but I'm, I'm glad you're unpacking it. If as an individual, I said, I specialize in homes on land, nicer neighborhood homes, homes with pools, these four or five cities, I'm now violating what I just said. Look at all these, so many things that I specialize in. I, you know, I think in real estate, one person's capable of having two or three areas that they're pretty dedicated and specialized in. But we have a team of 11 or 12 or 13 people. And so one person, for example, Mari, lives in Fort Worth, works out of our Fort Worth office. She might have two to three areas. She does, right? West Fort Worth, especially homes on land and nicer homes. She sold some very, very nice homes. Meanwhile, uh, David over here in our, in our Richardson office grew up in Richardson, specializes in Richardson, but also has helped a lot of people uh, with investment oriented properties and uh, some different life stage stuff with kind of downsizing from a big, nice home, not necessarily to a less nice home, but a smaller, nice home. Well, and he's, he's uh, doing some flipping of houses, yep. doing remodeling of houses. And he's now able to say, I'm a specialist in that because right. I know what to look for in that type of house. Yeah. And, I can and he help didn't people like used that. to say that until he had done it for, for several sure. years. So the point is, that's why as a team, we have a, a variety of gifts and abilities and experiences. So you, if you could call the office right now, 214-310-0008, call the Todd Money Home Selling Team. And you might say, hey, Ian, I want to buy a house on five acres near Rowlett. Well, we might say, well, Brandon, would be a good option for you. He knows that area very well. Versus Mari, who lives in Fort Worth. That's an obvious extreme example. But the sad thing is a lot of agents would be like, oh yeah, I can do that for you. And they would just drive an hour and a half to someplace they they have to use navigation because they've never even been there before, much less truly specialize in that area. So yeah, all that to say, we are big believers in specialization. There are parts of our industry that we're required um, as a matter of fact, it could be an ethical violation of our license laws to work with a client when you don't have a basic knowledge of that area. And sadly, real estate agents are violating that all the time because they're desperate for the business. That's another benefit of the team. And having more clients than you can actually serve and having a waiting list is saying, we will we'll work with the ones that we can truly help and remain ethical, that we won't work with people that we don't have a baseline knowledge for, which is required 
within our license laws. If you haven't checked the home valuation uh, of your home any recently, especially in the last few months, go to touchmoneyteam.com, click the home valuation tab in less than one minute. It's going to give you what your home is going to be worth. It's going to give you things like equity. You're going to be able to uh, ask for a cash offer. That There's equity so tracker is actually stuff. really, really cool. So it's 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 updating your property valuation on a monthly basis, and it's tracking your debt reduction and showing you that what you could get out of that house most likely right now is either up or down or up, you know, way up or a little bit up, that kind of thing. It's pretty cool. Yep. Touchmoneyteam.com. Click the home valuation button. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes left here. So how do folks kind of reconcile, understand, get straight in their head, what they're seeing in the news, what they're seeing on social media and, and then what people that are real estate agents are saying um, when it comes to like selling a house and stuff? Well, let me give you an example. Lately, there has been a growing sense that all the fear mongering is over. So what I mean by that is um, uh, for two years now, about pretty much two years, um, you know, the market's going to crash. Home values are going to go down. These interest rates are killing everything. There's going to be a recession has been 90 plus percent of the information about yeah. the market. Well, in the last four to six weeks, and I think I mentioned this on the show about six weeks ago, watch, here, the, the tone's gonna change. We could go find that audio someplace, but um, it has, we were right. Not that we're brilliant, we just pay attention. Um, and now it's been like, hey, I think we found the bottom in Q1 of 2023. Not that we're gonna shoot back up, but I think that's as bad as it's gonna get. There's a bunch of this tone. So how do you decide if you're gonna trust that or not? I would go back to what I said earlier and, and check the data, not the interpretation of the data, and see if it lines up, but also repeating what I said earlier. Talk to a local agent, and let me give you some nuance there, not just a friend or someone with a license locally because too many of those people are desperate for business. They'll say whatever it takes. You're looking for someone that does a lot of business, honestly, someone that does so much business that they're not desperate for one more deal so that they can give you unbiased information and a key one that's hard to find has a track record of getting these things right. I think we can dig into this more in the second half of the show will, because sure. I think one of the questions that people have, and I hear it when I talk to folks, is like, yeah, but this is your livelihood. Of course you're gonna tell me that now is the right time to buy and sell. Well, and that's the magic of finding someone that doesn't need your business. And also, right, we don't do this radio show solely to gain clients. Honestly, it's not that good of an opportunity. So we would do other things. We do this out of a sense of desire to be a value add in our community. Uh, it's too much work otherwise. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into that more in the second half of the show. Um, we've got a break here for some news, traffic, weather, and updates. Before we do that, though, if you don't currently know with confidence the condition of your roof, we've been through the spring and hail, We've been through heavy, heavy rain and heavy winds and one of the hottest blistering summers on record. You have got to know. You might have hail damage. You might have a little bitty area where the caulking and the sealant up against your flashing has cracked due to the heat. And now when we get some fall rain or ice or whatever, you could end up having a massive problem inside your home because you don't know the condition of your roof. I know that sounds kind of fearful, but the reality is your roof matters and getting it right matters. It's unbelievably reasonable to have someone check it out every year or two. It's unreasonable not to, and then get stuck with a massive problem later. PMRRoofing.com. That's who you want to have do this. PMRRoofing.com. Ask for Jordan Collins or just email him. Jordan at PMRRoofing.com. We'll be right back after news, traffic, and weather with more DFW Real Estate Weekly, where we will talk about what you need to know in this market to get it right. I do have to ask a quick question. Did you re-record that again? Because it's far less shocking than it was like three weeks ago. This, no, the, no. The, the opener of the show is where she gets you in the neck. Okay. It's shocking, and then I kind of toned it down, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah. And this I is I was less shocked. This is what people tuned in for right here. <laughs> this part. The opener? Yeah. Uh, no, no, the conversation about the show. Opener. Oh, absolutely. That's, there's nothing more That's compelling. That's kind of meta. This will probably be a bonus episode on the podcast. <laughs> I'm a man of the people, Todd. I know what they want. Yeah, some people. I don't know which. All right, folks, you are listening to DFW Real Estate Weekly, 
And uh, we're here every Saturday, but we're over on your podcast app all the stinking time with bonus episodes. We're over on the YouTubes, plural, uh, with, I don't know, 500 videos, something like that. And, and join our Facebook group. Producer Full Price Courtney is cranking out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bits and pieces of helpful, valuable stuff. So find us on the social medias. Find us on the internets. Mm -hmm. Find us on the YouTubes. You're really sounding old. Yeah. You're not making the show young. You're right. Okay. Just that's not our specialization. It, it's almost like it's almost like it's on purpose, Courtney, <laughs> and he's acting like he's hip to the jive or something. The the people we want <laughs> are the YouTubes. Oh gosh, it's he's like, like a cat. Grown adult man over here playing with like a fidget, a fidget spinner or something. All right, folks, you are once again listening to DFW Real Estate Weekly. If you have questions, you just call or you can even text. Cuz we're so young and Technology savvy. 214-310-0008. What do you think about getting me a new chair? Based on the sound that you're currently making with it, I'm I'm inclined to yes. I also really appreciate the fact she's doing negotiation live on air. Well, yeah. it seemed like you know, it it reminded me of the time that I really wanted a cell phone mm -hmm. and I I maneuvered getting stranded. And having to go into a Pizza Hut at ten o'clock at night for my parents to get me a cell phone. Do you phone. remember the time you wanted a cell phone here and then ordered the wrong one? Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> but we fixed it. Yeah. How do you feel about getting me a new car? Before I answer the question about getting you a new chair, how do you feel about cleaning off these shelves over here? No, I need an intern to come take that out. Well I'll So she be, wants a chair the, and an intern. The chair will come right after. All right. Yeah. I feel motivated. Hey, this first segment is brought to you by, and I'm sure he's going to be thrilled about it, Patrick Gleros <laughs> and Cardinal Financial. No one has ever pulled an audience in like we just did right there. Yeah, we are on our game. I just want people to get to know us. Patrick and then they'll Gleros. get excited about my chair. Patrick Gleros. Go to patrickgleros.com <laughs> where you can start an application for a mortgage. If you're looking to refinance, maybe you're thinking about getting a second home. Patrick is the first place you need to go to. PatrickGlaos.com, 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308804. Courtney, could you get us a chair sponsor? Oh, like an <laughs> Office Depot? No, not like an Office <laughs> Depot. I'm pretty sure that's not the I one. I don't know any chair brands. Oh, gosh. Listen to me. I'm listening. Trust me, everyone can hear. <laughs> it sounds like a seesaw in studio. Keen Landscaping Studios. Hey, this isn't normally my speciality, but I'm going to get us back on track a little bit. Thanks, How about Ian. that? Yeah! Last segment, we talked a little bit about specialization and like why that's important. I want to talk specifically about homes on land specialization. And the biggest question I think the folks has is, is like, yeah, it's really easy to print on a business card or put words on a website that mm -hmm. you specialize in something. Let's call it homes on land how do I actually know that this person specializes in homes and land? What are the questions I should be asking? What are the things I should be looking for? A couple things. And and this is, you know, there, there's no 100% absolute way to do this because there's an unlimited number of areas of specialization, you know, flat roofs, industrial land, raw land, in town, you know, all this stuff. But that person needs to know more than you know about the product. And usually in, you know, 2023 America, if you're excited about buying a home on land, you've begun to learn a bit about it. Jeremy Payne walking by the studio, ladies and gentlemen, marketing specialist extraordinaire, just staring at us through the window right now in studio, wondering what we're talking about, texting Ian, a uh, magical seller of houses, that guy there. Anyway, if you're excited about buying a home on land in 2023 America, chances are you've you know, dabbled on the internet and you've picked up some info. Well, your real estate agent should still know more than you. Now, you don't need to be a jerk and play gotcha and when you interview them, but number one, you should interview them and just say, hey, we are thinking about buying a home. We actually have a team member right now. It's looking at buying a home with about five acres. Um, Boy, is he glad he works here. Yeah, I think he is. There was a lot of questions at a meeting this week about it, but that's okay. We're excited for it. But the point I'm making is you ought to be able to say something like, hey, we're thinking about buying a home on three to five acres. What should we know? And then you should be able to sit and listen to some good, thoughtful, thought-provoking advice. It's like what I said earlier. 
you ought to be able to say, what should I be asking you? What should I be learning? What should I be figuring out before I do this? And if the answers are really broad and vague in general, like, well, we need to figure out price point and what part of town. That is inadequate. If, for example, on land, someone ought to say to you, look, are you okay with more rural leaning barbed wire fencing where you can see a lot of your neighbors? That's fairly common with that property type. Or are we looking for a giant backyard that feels more like a traditional neighborhood, but has the privacy of a unique neighborhood with a larger yard? Are you open to septic? Are you open to potential shared driveways or shared access? Are you open to being near some animals? How are you on septic? I'm not. Oh. How are we feeling about mowing, right? Is this a small tractor situation? Are you still thinking about hiring someone else to do this? Because that is a very different budget line item than when you were walking behind a push mower on a quarter acre lot. I mean, there's a thousand other things. Wells, irrigation, lighting, security that are all very different on that type of property. City codes, county rules, deed restrictions, HOAs. Can I have chickens? Can I not? This area you can, that area you can't. No roosters over here. All sorts of different things that if someone truly specializes in that, using land as an example, they're going to hit you with a handful of items that you hadn't thought about or you didn't know as much about, and they're going to be able to tell you about their experiences with other clients. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I okay. think it answers it really well. Good. Um, <clears throat> I want to get into the big butt segment right now, okay? Doesn't everybody. Big butt segment every time. So realtors are held to a higher ethical standard, but that is just the beginning. It's going to be better to have a realtor than not have one, but most realtors are pretty bad. Yeah, I like the second version better than the first just because I'm constantly frustrated about our industry. It's better to have a real estate agent help you buy or sell than not, but most real estate agents aren't very good at their jobs. Period, end of statement. I'll stand behind that. If you're listening and you're a real estate agent and that offends you, get better. Call us. But if you're listening and you're a real estate agent and you're really dedicated, then that should not offend you. You should be with us frustrated by the fact that people can get a real estate license out of a Cracker Jack box and then go tell their friends, family, and neighbors, I am the best person to help you steward $700,000 and the protection, safety, security, and location of your family. That's a lie. Lots of agents are lying. Now, I don't think they get up every morning thinking, who can I lie to today? They're just doing their best, and their best isn't good enough. And by the way, it's okay to say that. I'm not attacking any one person or any one brokerage or any one brand. I'm just saying our industry has long been, um, I was going to say disrespected. That's not the right word. Our industry for a long, long time has been held in a pretty low regard because most people aren't very good. That's why there's this idea that agents are overcompensated and they under deliver value. So the point I would make here is it is always better to have someone representing you in real estate. I'm going to take the always back. It is usually better to have someone with a knowledge base and a license and a commitment help you buy or sell than not. But most of those people, statistically speaking, are not very good at their job. So it is imperative that you find a really great, highly effective expert, and to use the wording that we've been using on this show, a specialist that can help you gain value, have less stress, less drama, uh, save time, and actually enjoy the process and, of course, the outcome. So if you're selling, someone who lives in your neighborhood doesn't necessarily mean they're an expert. Someone who has a license doesn't mean they're an expert. Just because they've had a license for 20 years doesn't mean they're an expert. That market changes every five minutes. That doesn't mean you've been, you're an expert in this market at all. But someone who could look you in the eye and say, I only sell in three main areas. This is one of them. I've sold 19 homes in the last year over here, and I have a system specifically for this neighborhood. Let me show it to you. Let me tell you four or five stories about someone with a kitchen like yours and a backyard like yours, even though you're on this side of the street, and I know that goes to a different school than that side of the street, and you guys have the big trees, and that one didn't. That's the kind of stuff where all of a sudden you're like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. She knows more about my property and its marketability than I do, and more than the other agents I talk to. She's one of the rare top 5% or less that I 
I could really get some significant value from. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah. And I think that that's like a good reinforcer of why trust matters so much. Like the, I need, I need an, I need an expert and I need to be able to trust them. Have you ever been to a doctor and you just like, didn't feel like you were yes. in the right environment? And like, you're I gotta like, get out get of here. Out. Yes. Like I want to get up and wa- I'll pay the fee, fee I'm out yes. of here. You're an hour and a half late. You were rude to me or my child. You're not listening. You're not validating my experience. Yeah. Man, y'all should pick better doctors. Gosh, you've not had that experience at like a pediatrician or something? Nope, have not. I have. Anyway, the the point is in in other environments, we are aware of what the risk of this not having the right person is. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in some sort of legal trouble or, or, or tax trouble or IRS trouble or whatever the case is, you're like, I need the right person to help me here. But with real estate, it's like, well, I'll use my nephew. I'm going to help him out. Right. Are you kidding? It makes no sense. I, like, I love my nephew, too. As a matter of fact, my nephew's thinking about getting a real estate license. But the point is, th- we've got to get this right. This is pivotal. Yeah. People always say it's the biggest purchase in your life. It may be not. Maybe you're wealthy. But the fact is, it's a big one. We should not goof off. We should get a pro, a specialist. Let me tell you about Republic Title, an excellent pro and specialist. They do everything that is title related, making sure that uh, you are legally allowed to actually buy your house. There's not going to be any hiccups that comes along the way to make sure that it can blow up. We don't want that. Republic Title are the best. It's great how you just said that because that is exactly what's happening. Like, Make sure you can actually buy the thing you want to buy with all the contracts because occasionally... You can't. Yes. And someone's got to check on that. And it's better when that person knows what they're doing. And Republic Title does. RepublicTitle.com is where you can find out what they do, what they offer, all those services. 972-423-8777 is the number you can call. Uh, a bad title company can wreck oh a deal. Oh, my gosh. The worst. Can wreck a deal. I'm so thankful. I just sent out three um, pieces of do- three documents, and they all went to Republic Title. I'm selling my, one of my properties right now. And it was unquestionable. The other agent's like, is there a title company that you want to use? I was like, oh, ap- I, non-negotiable. Republic title. Richardson office, specifically. Go to, to touchyourmoneyteam.com. Mm. You can click the radio tab and you can find all our recommended pros and vendors right there. Now, I've been away for a few. Hold on. Quick shout out to Angela. Back to you. Been away for a few little, you know, parts of the show here and there. Bringing it back, folks. Courtney oh wanted it. She requested gosh, it. I have it's missed it. back. No. Cockney rhyming slang word of the week. Don't forget, folks, they don't always rhyme. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Yes. Tea leaf. Tea leaf. I thought you were going to give me a sentence. Tea leaf. Tea leaf. Uh, Can't give you a sentence. It'd be too easy. What, like a, like. Not not relief. It's not relief. I just (gasps) feel it in my bones. It's not. I'm going to give you a tea leaf. Grief. No, 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 it's not grief. It's not grief. I was thinking like delicate. Uh. I'm going to give you a tea leaf. Reading the tea leaves is like the future psychic stuff. I don't even feel like it's relevant. Punch you in the face. So happy that I think I've got both of you. Tea leaf. Tea leaf. I'm going to. Belief. Nope. You don't think relief? Relief. You got five seconds. You can go with that, but I don't think it's that. (sighs) Tea leaf. I don't know. It's not grief. Thief. I got tea leafed. The tea leaf took all my stuff. A tea leaf took my stuff. That's stupid. Thief. That's not even. I, I refuse to hit the applause button on that. That's ridiculous. Thank you, everybody. Whatever whatever country or region is using that. Have you slang, ever that's used ridiculous. that? No. Ian. I'm not a cockney though. I'm not Where's a my cockney. cell phone? Cockney. From Yorkshire. Tea leaf. From Yorkshire. Uh-uh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, let's shift gears a little bit. Todd, I want you to talk to me. You talk a lot about like the three most important things in business. And I think this goes along with our big conversation about trust. Um, relationships, long-term thinking, and cash reserves. Amen. Say it again. Ta- Say it for everyone in the back. Mm-hmm. Relationships, long-term thinking, and mm-hmm. cash reserves. Yes. Ta- I really am interested in this. I'm glad. Like what you have you were, to say. If you were faking it, I would be upset about that. Do you know, have a I- specific order <laughs> that you would rank them? That's the order I rank them. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I have been, so many questions. So I, we don't, we do not have time on a radio show for me to tell this whole story. Maybe we'll do some videos for the YouTube channel. You can write this down. The but YouTube's so for the YouTube's all of them. So I grew up in an entrepreneurial environment. My dad's this unbelievably, incredibly gifted salesperson. Um, like he was tops at IBM when they were the pinnacle sales organization on the planet. Um, 
that's his lead gift. So I grew up around that. And then there was a season of his adult professional life that was fairly entrepreneurial. He started and, you know, succeeded and failed in multiple different businesses. I did not know this, but I was growing up in this entrepreneurial training ground, this small business training ground. I didn't know it. It was never like, sit down, let me explain to you how business works. I was just allowed access to everything. I was a weird kid in some ways. I, I took a briefcase to elementary school for a couple of years instead of a backpack. It's classic. It lines yep. up. That's definitely weird. I wanted in the summertime to go to work with my dad. I wanted to sit in on like real professional sales meetings and uh, you know that type of stuff. And I did, and he always let me, one of the coolest things. But because of that, um, I knew things that I hadn't been taught directly or at least had a sense of things and had a confidence about things that um, I, I don't think I ever could have done anything else other than get into small business. But the point I'm making is I've been around this, it feels like my whole life. And I'm not claiming any brilliance or anything, it's just, a comfort level. A com I've, I've gotten to see a ton of it. And because of that, I've tried to boil down some key core principles that I could say, if you're going to start or run or buy or operate or keep or not, whatever, a small business, these are the three most important things to your survival, to your thriving. Number one, relationships. There's nothing, there's no technology, there's no asset, there's no dollar amount that will be as valuable to you as relationships. Now for me as a Christ follower, as a Christian, my relationship with Jesus comes first. So that's so perfectly consistent with my life values that I don't value my home, my car, my business or anything more than I do the relationship I have with Jesus, my wife, my kids, my friends, my family, my church community, neighbors, and even that like subtle relationship you have just like with the community, with others around you. That's more valuable than anything. And by the way, those relationships can solve a lot of other problems technological, financial, whatever. So number one, relationships. Nothing should come before that. Number two, long-term thinking, meaning we're not solving today's problems with quick, easy solutions. We're solving them so these problems don't come back. Um, and, and it's not only problems oriented. We're building not for the market of today to capitalize on this short-term opportunity and then have to rebuild every time those things shift. We're building for sustainability and longevity. And in our model, we have deliberately missed out on some short-term opportunities to create long-term stability. For example, Ian was here. When COVID hit, nobody on our team had to panic. I told everyone, your job is safe. And a lot of that was due to number three, cash reserves. Cash reserves are a big part of long-term thinking. But Number one, relationships. Number two, long-term thinking. These are strategic. These are heartfelt values. Number three is technical. Cash in the bank. Now you can put it in whatever type of account or investment you like. But the fact is, if I've got enough cash that nothing can force me to make poor choices or impulsive choices or desperate choices in the short term, then we can likely weather a lot of storms. We can handle a lot of changes or misses or being wrong. When COVID hit, I was able to look all of our employees, our staff, and say, your job is safe. Regardless of income, we can pay you for a while. So keep working hard, stay focused, don't lose any sleep, your job is safe. And with our agents, we were even able to say, even if sales dip, you will not go hungry. We've got you. And I'm not bragging at all, but a lot, mo a lot of other people in commission sales jobs went, oh my gosh, are we essential? Am I gonna be able to make any money? Now, if they had treated their personal business the way we're talking and they had big cash reserves, they could have weathered their own individual storms um, and many of our team members did. We talk about bi biblical financial stewardship around here a lot. But the point is, I don't think there's anything in small business more important than those three things. And I've talked on big stages, I've written blog articles and talked about it on the radio and even in one-on-one -on -one private coaching and consulting, I talk about those things as much as anything else with the business owners and leaders that we're serving. I'm really excited that in the next few weeks, we're going to have a new team member joining us, new agents going to be mm -hmm. jumping on board with us. And we've actually had a, a number of conversations with folks that have heard us talking about the fact that we are recruiting and that we are looking yes, for new team members. We're looking for two to four new team members, both around here, a couple over on the Richardson side. We also need a couple of folks over on the Fort Worth side. So let's dig into kind of the book series that we've been going to from the book, The Five Lives, The 
we will ruin your real estate career. I've got it memorized. Sure Just you a do. little little trip up there on the tongue. And the truths that can make you wealthy. The twelfth truth that we're going to talk about is ask for business. Imagine that. Now, if you're not in sales, let me make this applicable to you. Applicable applicable or applicable? What do we like? Applicable. Okay. Applicable. Applicable. Let me make this applicable to everyone, whether you're in sales or not. I tell my kids, I tell our sales agents here on the team, you don't G-E-T unless you A-S-K. Now, sometimes no is the answer. That's okay. No is the answer a lot of times. But if you don't ever even ask, then you'll never get it. You didn't get back to me on the car, by the way. That's the right. Car. Well, TBD. Okay. Uh, long term. Think long term. Um, G-E-T, A-S-K, T-B-D. So the point here is for our agents, you know, we want to serve home buyers and home sellers. We want to add value in their lives. We want to be a value added uh, contributor for our radio listeners and our podcast listeners. We're not, we're not going to sell lots of them homes, many, many, many of them. We got hundreds of thousands of people that engage with us every year. You know, we're going to sell two or 300 houses probably. The point is, we want to be of service to them. But when it is appropriate and we can truly help, we have to ask for the business. We have to ask someone out on a date. We have to ask, um, you know, to I'm available. someone to come to the party, someone to work with us or for us or for a job or whatever the case is. So this sounds so simple, but it is so fundamental that people have a reluctance to do this and need to be more bold and courageous in asking for the business, asking for the opportunity. Um, I don't have time to talk about it today, but I sold a house this week, personally, a property by, as the seller, asking a potential buyer if they wanted to accept terms in reverse. Seller asked buyer, and it worked. We're selling the property. All right, folks, if you haven't had anybody check your roof out lately, you got to go to pmrroofing.com. If you don't have your landscaping and your whole outdoor space dialed in for the fall, get ready now. You want to reach out to Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. And uh, if you aren't confident in your home's condition, you probably want to think about putting a home warranty on it and you want to check that out with super home warranty. All the information is on our website, toddtremontiteam.com, toddtremontiteam.com. And of course, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, especially if you're looking on land, or if you're looking at a nice home in a neighborhood in DFW, we want to at least have that conversation and find out if we can help you, if you're the right client for us. If not, we'll connect you with someone that is. If so, Start that conversation now. Most people wait too late. You can never start too early. ToddTremontiTeam.com, 214-310-0008.